Hello and welcome to today's video. Today is my skincare and kind of beauty product inventory video. This is pretty much all of what I categorize as beauty that's not makeup. Makeup will be a separate video in and of itself. But yeah, I have a lot of categories to break down for you. I'm gonna go over what I owned in the past, like the number wise, what I own now, and kind of what my goals are moving forward. So why don't we go ahead and get into it. Okay, as we get started, you'll notice that I'm now off center because I'm trying to fit photos and numbers right here for you. I also may be looking occasionally over at my computer, so I hope that's not too distracting, but let's go ahead and get into the first category, cleanser. In January of 2019, I had 14 items. I actually in 2019 didn't do like a mid-year check-in and I was kind of surprised the next year in January 2020 when I noticed that my numbers went up. That was not my intention when I uploaded my first inventory in January of 2019. So I've been tr keeping better track of the numbers and you'll see now that in January of 2021 I have 14 items again. You will also notice that the goal was 10 for this category, so I didn't technically meet my goal. However, a couple of these items I realized are things that I was stockpiling just in case because some of the items that Bo and I consider like necessities for us are harder to get our hands on over here. So I have like a backup of my salicylic acid wash because it's something that I have never seen over here in Sweden, but I absolutely love. I know they do carry a couple CeraVe items here, but I have never seen that particular wash. And also while I was preparing for this video, I did go back and look at some old photos of what my cleanser pictures looked like and what products I owned. And I'm, I'm actually, and I'm actually really proud of myself that I have less, what's the word, like random items. I, uh, when I look at the photo of what I have now, they are actually mostly items that I really like. I think I see, I think I see three or four items that I would honestly never be interested in enough to pick up again, but everything else in the photo are things that I love. So 10 out of those 14 items are things that I actually adore and like will always probably own. Whereas if I compared that number to last year, I think I had a lot of extra items in my cleanser products that just were not good products and that I didn't actually like. I just had them just because I wanted to have things. So I, I'm doing better here, even though the numbers don't really look like it, if that makes sense. Okay, moving into the next category, we have exfoliating products. And in January 2019, I had nine items. In January 2020, I had seven. My goal was for five, and I'm sadly still at seven. Now, I know I bought one new item in this category, the backup to my peeling solution that I love. So technically, my numbers are going down. At the same time, I realized that maybe my, my goal of being able to get this down quite a bit is not that realistic. Exfoliators are something that I go through super slow because I need to make sure that my skin barrier can handle it. And a lot of what I've owned in the past in this category have been physical exfoliants and they're not that great for your skin. So it's not realistic that I'm gonna run through them that quickly. In the future, I honestly would just see myself ha having a peeling solution from The Ordinary, that's like my favorite chemical exfoliator, and then maybe a lip exfoliator. So two in the future would be really all that I need. Okay, moving into masks, in January 2019, I had 10. In January 2020, I had 11. My goal was five, and at January 2021, I'm sitting at six. This year, I honestly would love to get this down to one item. I, I as you can see, a lot of what I own are mostly like single use products like sheet masks. And then I have like two regular size or small kind of face masks that I don't really even know if I remember. I, one of them, I don't even know if I like. So I really need to give those a shot and see if there's something I can finish off. If not, I need to let them go. But I think realistically, I could probably get this down to one by the end of the year. For our next category, we have moisturizers. And in January 2019, I had nine. January 2020, I had eight. My goal was five and I'm sitting at nine again. This is another category again where we're kind of stockpiling things that we know we need and love because we don't know the next time that we'll go home and be able to get our hands on some of these. But I looked down at the photo and I legitimately love everything that I own. There's, I don't have anything in this that doesn't serve a purpose in my collection. Maybe one of the giant Cetaphil, the giant Cetaphil bottle could, could be gone because it kind of is being replaced by that CeraVe tub. But the reason I've set my goal for five this year is that I know that technically we'll be using these up and I'm trying to talk myself into not buying too many as a replacement, even though all these products in my collection need to be there, if that makes sense. Okay, moving into the next category, we have eye creams. And eye creams in January 2019, I had eight. Last year, I had eight. My goal was five, and at January 2021, I have three. Now, I have my goal to get down to one, but realistically, I think that in the future, I'm not quite sure if I want one eye cream or zero eye creams. I kind of believe that they don't really do much for you. I think there are so many good active ingredients that you can put all over your face that are gonna benefit your under eyes. And there's nothing that an eye cream can do for your eyes that your good skincare can do, can't do for your eyes, if that makes sense. 
However, I do acknowledge that right now during the winter, my skin's a little bit more dry and I sometimes enjoy putting on an eye cream right before I start doing my makeup just to make sure that part of my face is a little more hydrated because that part of my face can be a little bit more dry. But really, Delin, you could just use a moisturizer for that. So I'm gonna officially say that my goal should be zero for this category in the future. <laughs> Okay, the next category is skin treatment. This is any item that has like really good active ingredients that do things for really good things for my skin. So in January 2019, I had nine. Last year, I had 14. My goal was seven, and in January 2021, I have 12. I would love to get this under 10. Realistically, a lot of those Curology bottles that you see in this photo are things that I'm not able to use right now. For those of you who don't know, my husband and I have been trying to get pregnant now for over a year, and in those Curology bottles, I have some active ingredients that aren't safe to take during pregnancy, so even though I'm not pregnant, I've just been trying to not use them at all. So ideally, this number would be well below 10, but since I'm not able to like work through those items right now, I'm just saying maybe less than 10. Maybe I can get two or, or maybe three out of my collection this year, but realistically, it might not move too much. Moving into the next category, we have oils and serums, and in January 2019, I had eight. January of last year, I had 10. My goal was five, and currently I'm sitting at nine, but I realized also that that goal was probably a little bit unrealistic. I think when I formulated this goal being five, I think I was thinking those three big timeless bottles, those things are just staples in my collection, and then I like to have a beauty oil, and so, and then maybe giving myself just room for one more. And now I know that not only those three timeless bottles are staples, but also like the Ordinary Lactic Acid Serum, the Argyrolene Solution from them, and a beauty oil, so I'm probably more realistically around seven as an ideal number for me, so I would like to get that down to seven this year. And then moving into our next category, sunscreen. In January of 2017, we had seven. January of last year, we had nine. My goal was five, and I'm currently at eight. And when I look at these numbers, I know deep down that like these kind of things expire. I don't need a ton of them. Eight is kind of a ridiculous number for the amount that I use them. I don't t tend to use them on my body because I don't wear a lot of shirts that aren't long sleeved here in Sweden. So I need to kind of get that down to like one body sunscreen and maybe two face sunscreens and that's it. Like I don't need any more than like two or three items. So in the future, I'd only like to have about two or three items in this category. Okay, now we're moving into the insane category of lip care. In January 2019, I had 43 items. In January 2020, we had 65. I don't know why it increased that much, but it did. And I kind of just set an arbitrary goal to get that down to 40, just sound a little bit more reasonable than 65. And in January 2021, I am at 41 now, in large part thanks to Bo and all of his like Carmex painting. He is the king of Carmex, as people called him in the comments before. And so for January of 2022, I'd love to get that down to like 20. I really don't think there's a crazy need for us to have 20 items. I know that when we realized that Carmex gave Bo such good relief, we like stocked up a ton because they are expensive here. And for the price that we can get them here in Sweden, we could get like three or four of them from like big lots in the US. So anytime we made a trip home or when our family sent us care packages, we would just get like a ton of Carmex. So I know that's how our numbers got so inflated. But realistically, I know this probably needs to be under 10 or probably even under five because I'd much rather wear my lipsticks and lip glosses than like blow through like chapsticks if that makes sense. It, I, I prefer lip glosses anyways like I, I love the way they feel on my lips anyway so yeah in the future this definitely needs to be under 10 but for now I'll just set the goal at 20. Let's just cut in half what we have already. Okay, moving into the next category, we have toners. In January 2019, I had six. Last year, I had six. My goal was three, and I'm currently sitting at nine. Why, why, why? Now, I know that sounds like it, that it went in the wrong direction, and technically it has, but I know that some of these items are things that I am making. So in the photo, you'll see like a Mario Badescu bottle, but it's clear because I made Bo like a face setting spray. And so technically that's an item that I don't mind if, if that's one of the reasons why it went up. Now, a lot of that I can see is fluff and needs to be gotten out of my collection. I would like to stop buying any kind of facial spray with a fragrance in it in the future and just make my own like that Mario Badescu bottle. So I'm gonna try to maybe keep this category down to like two or three in the future, if that makes sense. Okay, so the next category up is tanning, and it's finally like a good one for me. This is like pared down to the max. I had seven items in, in January of 2019, six items last year. My goal was three, and I finally have it down to three. I think that's manageable and exactly what I need. A body scrub, an actual like tanning something like a mousse, and then I love to have like a glowy kind of tanning gradual lotion to kind of just moisturize with as soon as I finish like washing off that tanning mousse in the, the next day. So that's kind of what I would prefer to keep in manage 
And I think that's completely manageable, so that's gonna kind of stay where it's at. All right, moving from one manageable category to one that is definitely not manageable, lotions. In January 2019, I had eight. January of last year, I had eight. My goal was four, and for some reason, I'm up to 15. Like, what was I thinking? I don't know. Now, I know I picked up like a couple lotions here and there, like the Sugar Crush one from uh, Soap and Glory, and then a Vaseline one. Those are typically like daily, daily drivers for me. And the perfume scented ones are ones that I kind of safeguard and only wear when, if it's like a date night or if we're going out, which we all know that that hasn't really happened much in 2020. But then the rest of them are things like samples that I just need to work through. There's no, I've, I've always saved them or held onto them thinking I'll use them, I'll take them traveling with me, and then I never do it. So this year I'm finally gonna try to work work on some of those and just move them out of my collection because obviously I don't think to bring them when we when I travel so they just need to get used up letting them sit there and just be bulk in my inventory I, I don't need to do that anymore so in the future I'm definitely going to pare this one down quite a bit I'm not sure how realistic it is but I'd love to get this number under five by the end of the year Okay, moving into the next category, we have fragrance. In January of 2019, I had nine fragrances and 23 samples. Last year, I had 12 and 23 samples. My goal was eight and 10 samples, but however, I definitely didn't reach that. This year, I'm sitting at eight and 23 samples. So for some reason, I know I have this mental block to reach for my like sample perfumes. I really only pack them if I'm going to like leave my house for an extended period of time. Like I really only pack them if I know I'm going on vacation and I, I, I literally don't know why I do this to myself. These things in my head exist for traveling and then I don't really use them once I do it. So I really need to make an effort this year to get through my samples, but I'm not quite sure if it's realistic to use them all up. Plus I don't know how I would feel about using them all up. So I think maybe what I'll do is set a goal at using up some of my bigger fragrances because honestly those also need to get used up this year. Eventually we will be moving back to the US and I would love to not have to take up space in a suitcase with like large half empty bottles of perfume. So I need to make an effort to use up several of those. Some of my perfume bottles are at home in the US in storage. So I think I have about three or four at home in the US. So I need to make an effort to maybe get my numbers down to like five and 10 samples this year. We'll see if I can do that. Okay, moving into the last category, we have nail polishes. In January of 2019, I had six. Last year I had 19. I ended up getting more into nail polish. So I'm not really sad that my numbers jumped up that, that much. I needed some good quality like colors that actually made me excited. And now I'm currently sitting at 22 and three miscellaneous items, meaning like my nail polish remover, things like that. So I'm not really worried about that number. I, I don't think I want it to really go up. I think I have like solid colors covered in my collection. So unless I see a color that I really feel like I'm missing, I maybe I might pick up two by the end of the year. But in general, I would love to cap this at keeping it under 24, 25 nail polishes in total for the, this entire category. I would love for my numbers to never exceed 25, if that makes sense. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this. And let me know in the comments if you've done something similar to this. Let me know if there are any categories in your kind of like beauty collection that you're hoping to pare down or any of them that you're happy with. I'm really curious to see if I'm in the same boat as some other people or if maybe some parts of my collection are just kind of crazy. You can call me out, I'm okay with it. I'm comfortable with myself this year. So make sure you say hello and I will see you in the next one, bye.